All right, actually, I don't even know if I am live or not because it said my video recording shut out, but we'll go with it anyway. I'm going to hit record just so I don't have to do this twice. Um, crap. Oh. Let me try that over again. So we'll see if this works. I'm going to keep going. Screw it. All right, so what I want to talk about tonight is um, a fairly common procedure in the ICU and when it comes to severe pneumonias that have ARDS, which is Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Um, this news that I'm getting is coming out of South Africa, where they are getting hit with their first wave of Corona uh, SARS-CoV-2. And I think that's a good point to bring up is because it is their first wave, although they do have a new variant, which is little understood about it right now. It is their first wave. So saying that it's more severe is kind of hard to say because they didn't get pounded like we did last year. So what this doctor has, he's come out with this new procedure that is pretty commonplace in an ICU when you're dealing with pulmonary cases, but we're not doing it here. And that is bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is where they stick a camera into your lungs, through your mouth and through your windpipe or through your nose, through your windpipe. And then in all the segments, they can reach pretty far um, all the segments of the lung, and we can use it for multiple reasons. For if a child or an adult even has swallowed something and inhaled it, we can look for it. If there is infection, if there's bleeding, we want to see what the source of the bleeding is. So we can snake our way all the way through there and find out what's going on. So this doctor in South Africa is treating his patients with bronchoscopy, and he says that he finds these patients that are in acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, have some hard, hard mucus plugging in their airways. And it's so thick or maybe hard that it cannot be coughed out. And once you start losing segments of the lung, it kind of exponentially gets worse. So when you start losing what we call recruitment out of the alveoli, or opening them up, each one that opens makes the other one easier to open, and so on. But if you start um, clogging those up, then the lungs will no longer expand to their fullness, and when you can't aerate a lung, then the blood pressure increases because we don't want to give blood to a place that's not getting any air. It's a waste of blood. So then we get pulmonary hypertension or hypertension on the right side of the heart because the heart, right side of the heart pumps to the lungs, and then the lungs to the heart, and then the heart to the body. So there's a lot of bad stuff that happens when we can't breathe obviously. So why aren't we doing this? Well, as you can imagine, getting up close and personal to somebody's face, as well as their lungs, where this virus resides, there's such a, there's a too big of increase or a risk of infection transmission. But think about it anyway, we're already intubating these people, so we're already getting up close and personal, they're already on ventilators, and they're in a scenario where that's expected. Um, why is it that the first day that I did my orientation at the hospital, they taught me how to use a little hazmat suit? Am I never supposed to use it? <laughs> you know, so we have the technology to do it. So what this doctor says is he noticed that these plaques were hard and that when he suctioned them out, um, their mortality, they live longer. And he said it's about 90 some percent. He has said he hasn't had anybody die during the procedure and that he said the ones that did die died of um, not just COVID, but they had more uh, confounding comorbidities on top of that. I also think, should we be scared of this? I mean, frontline healthcare workers are the first ones to get the vaccines. We are good at PPE because we do it daily, so we're better than the general public. And these people are going to die without it. But if they're not dying, then why not? There should another be another time where a surgeon's numbers or in this case, a pulmonologist, intensivist, or whoever's doing it, um, they shouldn't worry about it because this patient's doomed and if you're saving more people than you are hurting, then that's the best. And if we have a treatment for it that's showing kind of, def not definitively, because this is all anecdote with a 40 patient base, which is not statistically relevant at all, but if you trust the source that it's coming from, trust his competency and trust his result, then I think anecdote is fine in this case. The procedure in itself is not uh, dangerous, 
So it's not like we're going out of our way doing something really, really crazy. No, it's a, a bronchoscopy. We do it all the time. So he was saying that we see results, and these people are doing far better than the people that didn't get it, and far better than other people with ARDS. So let's kind of look at this from a progression of the disease. You get the virus. Now in South Africa, they have this new variant. So when they talk about variants, what they're talking about is just the spike protein, because that is all we can identify, and that is what we choose to attack. So this variant in South Africa is kind of like the ones that came out of the UK, and um, as in they are modified spike protein. And the only reason they're more infectious, if you will, which I think is the wrong word, um, once they're already inside your body, then they're more efficient. But they do not get inside your body any easier. I've said that before. Um, I think Dr. Fauci did a great job explaining himself today during the press conference. I think he's finally able to say stuff because um, he's also really good with words. So we got to realize that. Yes, the virus is a better virus for itself, but it doesn't transmit across a room or a place or from person to person any easier. What it does do is once it's inside you, it's going to replicate itself faster, more, so you may have a higher viral load and viral shedding than you would with the other variant. But uh, once you get the back, or virus in you, you get a pneumonia. And with uh, SARS-CoV-2, and once you progress to COVID-19, you have a good chance of progressing to um, ARDS. And that's when you just start to get respiratory failure. One reason we got to think about this is that the SARS-CoV-2 virus is causing us to um, secrete this thick mucus, which is not very viscous, uh, and it inhibits our recruitment of the alveoli. Uh, so it is a pneumonia. we got to remember that. This is not just some virus. It is a lung pathology. And so then this pneumonia can progress into ARDS, which is kind of just the shutdown. Um, losing my train of thought. Uh, so let's kind of, I want to go through a video and just show what a bronchoscopy is. So if you've never seen one, you can understand what they're doing. So they're going through. If the scope is passed gently beyond the middle meatus and past the airway, they get the blood. Okay, so the back of the throat, that's the thing that goes over your airway to protect you when you swallow. Those are the vocal cords. Numbing the larynx completely. Keeping the scope well centered. Bronchoscope is passed between the cords. So those bands, vocal cords, and then the rings are your uh, windpipe, the cartilage. The bronchoscope is advanced past the middle neatus. The uvula is seen anteriorly pointing towards the larynx. The other blood is seen anteriorly protecting the glottic aperture. So this right here that looks like a tongue is the little flaps. When you swallow, it shuts like a trash can lid, covers the airway, and when you open back up, you breathe air in. So when we're sticking a tube somebody's throat, we aim right here. When you push down on that, it pushes down like a trash can lid, actually. and pops open, and you can stick your tube and advance it. Arrhythmias are seen posteriorly in the 6 o'clock position. The scope can be held in either the right or the left hand. Some people prefer to drive the scope with their dominant hand, while others prefer to use their dominant hand to manipulate accessory instruments. Regardless, Remember that the hand holding the scope does bronchoscopist to feel comfortable. I want to keep my shoulders square, my feet planted firmly on the ground. That's not a good video. <laughs> it doesn't show anything. Um... Yeah. Right. Note that this is a blind move. If the epiglottis is lifted successfully, it will not be seen again. Sometimes the epiglottis is very floppy and difficult to lift up. Floppy glottis. This is a crucial step, and if the epiglottis is not, the course should come into view. And it is the only complete ring, or C2, between this the right and the left. This teaching more about the, the I just want to see something quick. Right. So this is the carina, or basically where the lungs split left and right. Um, so this, sh I don't know how the patient's working it, so. The one that goes straight down usually, so they V off, but one goes more straight than the other. That's usually right main stem, um, has a more straight down path. So if you're not looking and you go too far, you can bang on that little carina and damage it, or you can 
right main stem are going to only one lung, and then when you ventilate, you automatically collapse the other. Not important for this at all. I'm just kind of going to show you what your lungs look like in the inside and what the virus is doing. If so, let's identify the tertiary carina between middle no, and not. lower lobe. Also, make note of the next level of division. The so it, the it divides the all the, the way band down, band and then I mean, I was watching a video that had and had mucus here, maybe. Good. Tissue samples. We need to get more and more tissue to assess molecular characteristics of a particular tumor type. Knowing tumor type allows them to tailor treatment for each individual patient. Robotic-assisted bronchoscopy may also lead to new, less invasive ways to treat lung tumors. That's the holy grail, if you will. Using robotic technology to benefit patients. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Vivian Williams. Never yeah. seen before. This is nothing that's going on. I can't find anything. So, um, and I really probably should have planned this out more. So, what I'm going to do is so, with it, when it comes to this treatment, I think we should all be doing it. I think in Western medicine, like we have right now, we are very afraid of getting sued. But, like I said, in this case, I think the risk is more toward the physician performing the procedure to catch the virus than there is a patient with performing a bron bronchoscopy. It seems like the only benefit, only thing is benefits, where you're sucking out mucus, allowing more alveoli recruitment, and diminishing the ARDS. Um, another thing, might as well, I don't think I'll do it here because I think I just lost everybody's attention because I lost my attention on it too. Um, if you can, I would start calling your local pharmacies and physicians to see when these vaccines are going to be available to the public. I mean, it's always been known that it was going to be late spring, early summer for the general population to get it anyway. There has been rumors that people are not getting their vaccines or there's not enough and there's just vaccines sitting around. So why waste it if there's some place I can do it? But I would know the means or logistics of way to do that either. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My face is dumb. Um, I'm going to do a video here later. I'll probably record that where I'm going to go over the cholesterol again and how we are really just screwing up cardiovascular disease, uh, the practice of the medicine. I'm going to kind of go more into talking about that too, where getting healthy is not as hard as they think it is. Uh, it's always harder to help yourself. And so I may have some good advice for you, but we'll get into that more. Um, maybe I should do a random video at 141 after listening to NPR.